Well, after several months, I'm going to revisit my uh, washer launcher project. Probably crushing a soda can to prove the uh, cinder block is not crushing the soda can. But the first thing is to fix everything. Um, for one thing, I've learned. I don't know if you can see that screw sitting there on top of the transformer. It came off that capacitor right there. You can see the burning and charring. One thing I've learned is you have to clamp everything. You can't solder anything. Over here is another problem. That top binding... Ouch. We're having trouble focusing that close. But, um... Well... There you can see it's like gone. Burnt wires. You can see this wire's burned. So what I've learned to do is never solder anything. Always clamp your connections. And uh, when the original video was shot, we only had one microwave oven transformer. We now have two of them. And there in between, if I can get a good close and zoom, is a bridge rectifier. Uh, how it works is the two transformers, their uh, primaries are in series, so they only have 50 volts on their primary, so as a result their secondaries are only 1,000 volts instead of 2,000. Then our bridge rectifier, basically one phase from each transformer, rectifies the power, and of course the famous resistor that keeps smoking is still there, even though I have a huge beast to put in sometime. And another new addition is, I think they call it an IBGT block, the SCR fried a while back, so I've replaced it with this block unit here. Uh, I think it's rated for 1,600 amps at 1,200 volts. And uh, it has not fried. So there's our current configuration. The uh, diodes and resistor also work to prevent reverse EMF. Basically after the thing fires you have a kickback voltage and they help protect it. Also somebody asked about the ammeter. The ammeter is now totally dead. It's kind of like stuck at a number and doesn't respond anymore. But it only monitor the charging current, uh, not the discharge current. So anyways, hopefully in a little while I get this thing all fixed up and running and we'll shoot a new video crushing a soda can. The next part of the setup is our coil. We have the flat coil of 14 gauge copper covered, copper enamel covered <laughs> copper wire on which we put a platter removed from a five and a quarter inch hard drive and then a soda. Then on each side we have uh, wooden stands to keep the center block from falling after the impact. The power supply has been retrofitted with clamps to the banana plug connectors instead of soldered. That eliminate the solder melt. Uh, the clamps are, I don't know what they are, probably steel. Make sure you don't use aluminum clamps to clamp the wires. Also, uh, over here was where the uh, one connection burned out. And there is a good view of the uh, new SCR I'm using these days. So everything is all fixed up and ready to go in the power supply. Now I need a stick to hit the fire button with. Okay. Tape is rolling. Here goes. And from the looks of things, we were a little bit off center. But that would kind of almost look like the center block falling does do some effect on it. But it was off center. And so the can didn't crush all that well. But you could definitely tell it was crushed.